Hello. Today I'd like to show you how to use some of those um, delicious five inch squares that I know everybody has. And I, I'm going to show you how to make a little house block today. Now I have also just incorporated a little bit of background fabric and I've used a white for just up in the corners. Uh, but all the rest of the house, the walls and the roof and the door are made using five inch squares. So starting off with a roof, I'm going to have little blue roofs on my houses today. And to make the roof, one five inch square makes two roofs. So we'll just cut that in half. So you just need to have it cut to two and a half inches. So exactly in half, so that it's five inches long and two and a half inches wide. So we now have enough there for two roofs. And I've already pre-cut my background squares. Now they just need to be two and a half inch squares. So you could actually use five inch squares and cut them into four. But because I'm wanting a continuous white throughout these blocks that I'm making, I've chosen to use a white fabric and I'm cutting them into two and a half inch squares. So first of all we're going to start off drawing a diagonal line across these little background squares from point to point. And we can do that on all four. I'm going to quickly make um, two blocks while we're here because it's kind of easier to make two. Um, so I'll just quickly draw these diagonals. Now we're going to place these onto the roof rectangles. So I'm just going to lay that one on there and I can lay the next one ready and I'm going to pop these through the sewing machine. Now we're going to sew right on that drawn line. So not to one side or anything, just right on that line. And uh, get all my little bits together here. going to bring the next one in. Two roofs have got to be better than one. Okay and now take that out, trim off my threads and now I'm going to place the other square on the other half and sew it so that the points meet at the top of the rectangle. Now when, you, when we sew them like this where there's no overlap it does mean that we're going to lose that little point. Um, I'll show you that a little bit later. Um, so it's just the way this little house works with this using the five inch squares. So now I'm going to go back to the sewing machine and sew those two diagonal lines. just about done with their roofs. We've just got to trim away these corners. Now if you are into saving the corners you could sew another line half an inch away and cut away between the two and then you'd have just a small um, half square triangle trimmed off there but I'm not going to do that right now. I'm just going to trim off my triangles. So trim a quarter of an inch away from the seam line into that outside area on both lines. And on the other roof as well. This is a great little block. It's very good at using up all the five inch squares. There's no waste except for these little corners. And even those you don't have to waste if you don't want to. Okay, now I'm just going to bring the iron in and press those. Now because I'm using a, a white, I didn't want the seam to show through, so I'm going to lay the white triangle down first and then press the roof over. So there's my little roof. I'll we'll just get the other one done. Okay, so now I need some walls and a door. So I've got here uh, two fabrics that I'm going to use for my walls. But I've also I've got a door in, inside here, so um, if it's the same, same way as we did with the uh, roof for the doors, we would just need to cut that in half, because one square makes two, do two doors. So one square makes two roofs, and one square makes two doors. And then out of the walls, now we've got three pieces on the walls, we've got two, uh, a piece either side of the door, and we've got a piece over the top under the roof. So to achieve that, 
Uh, I've just laid the two squares on top because I'm cutting two houses. You need one square per house. And I'm going to cut a strip off that. So I'm not trimming the square at all. It's a five inch square. And I'm going to cut a strip that's one and three quarter inches wide. Now I'm using my board to line everything up. And I'm going to cut through at one and three quarter inches. And I actually would need two of those. So I'm going to cut the next one at one and three quarters away from that cut line, which is actually at one and a half inches in from this edge, which is exactly what we want, because we want two five inch by one and three quarter inch strips, and we need one one and a half inch by five inch strip, and that actually is going to go across the top. Now I've already got two little bits here that I'm using for doors, and so the door is going to go in between. So now I'll just quickly run those through the sewing machine so that we can see how this little house gets built. So I'm going to take the door and one of the walls and I'm going to sew them right sides together down the side just with a quarter inch seam allowance. And I might as well pop the other one through while I'm here. So right sides together, this is the one and three quarter inch strip to the door which is two and a half inches wide. Okay, and now I'm going to just pop the other side on as well. So we need the other one and three quarter inch strip. Make sure it's the same one with our house kind of likes to match. Although yours may not, of course. Sorry, the wall on the other side of the door. Oh, you can tell I'm not a builder. So it's coming together nicely. Definitely quicker than actually building a house, I have to say. So now I'm just quickly going to press those. Now, because these bits are overlapping, I'm actually just going to press one side down, but I'm going to lift over, open the other side. And that gives me a, a nice press. And then I can turn it round and lift up the other wall and just press that so that the seams are going into the walls. Same with this one. Seams into the walls. And now we just need to have that little bit that goes above the door, which is this bit here and here. So I'll quickly run those through the sewing machine. I like to press as I go. I find I get a much better result that way. And I like to press from the right side. So. I love little house blocks. I think they're just so appealing and that these fabrics are so delicious. They remind me of little summer houses or boat houses. Okay, so we've got our little top bit of wall above the door. And I'll give those a quick press. So I lay that down and just lift that little bit of top wall and let it press down flat. And the same with this one. And now they need their roofs on. So now same thing, just right sides together again with their quarter inch seam allowance. So you can see there's almost no waste. It's only those corners. And as I mentioned, you could actually save those corners and put another seam line and save them. just built two houses. How's that? So I'll quickly press the roofs. Now the roof I'm going to lay down first because there's these little seams that have come in at an angle they're kind of giving it just a little bit more desire to go that way. I kind of like the fabric to fold the way it's most comfortable going if possible. 
So we'll just press it that way. And the same with this one. And there I have two very elegant little summer houses. Now you can see that I've, I mentioned earlier that we're going to lose the little point because we're going to lose that in our seam allowance when we pop a strip or another fabric next to that. But when we take our quarter inch seam allowance in, we're actually just going to lose that and we'll just have a little flat top. But again, I quite like that. And the seam also is going to come in right where the roof point is. I think that's uh, quite attractive. And I love the fact that there's virtually no waste. I'll quickly show you a few of these houses all set out together. I have done a pattern that includes these houses. The pattern shows quite different colors, but I've made a whole little series of little houses and they've all got blue roofs but they're not all the same color walls little yellow houses and orange houses and green houses it's just it's just so delicious now you could have a couple of rows of houses i don't really know how i'd want my houses i haven't decided yet but i just thought that was a great idea for using up some of those um five inch squares as i mentioned that everybody has of course because you can't really survive without five inch squares in life so that was just a little idea i have made some little houses in some quite different colors um, in some batik fabrics where will we put those I'm going to pop them down the front there they're quite different looking but every bit is fun um, so you can see all the different colours will work just as well, whichever way you do things. They don't have to be summer houses. These, these ones have obviously got a nighttime sky and a much darker houses. So I have done a pattern for this and it's called Houses using 5 inch squares. And it's available to purchase and download on my site, gourmetquilter.com. Um, but that just gives you an idea of um, what you can do. So on, this, on the pattern, I have done a very small sashing in between with little tiny sashing posts because I had the night sky. I thought they kind of looked like little yellow stars in the sky. But on this one, of course, I'll be doing something quite different. Um, but there was just another idea for some five inch squares. Thank you.